pull up there just like make sure it's linking it to the google drive and that we're sharing then it should be yeah. doable but i haven't fucked with it yet yeah i haven't really fucked with a whole lot of things all right we're live i think I'm trying to find my uh i have a color list for these belgians see that'd be a cool thing to put up like a little text thing of what color you're using at any given time. Just like a little. Oh, that's kind of neat. What? Oh, to have that up. Yeah, yeah. Show the color oh, it's, and stuff. Oh, yeah. It's just an idea. You'd have to implement that. Yeah. Right there. All right. So. Took some liberties on some of these colors. So what should we do today? I like to start with like the base stuff. So we'll probably do boots today. I mean, at least first. Let's see it. Wait, 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 seven nine. So, yeah, let's start there. F8. You remember the wet palette, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I'm trying to focus on keeping uh, in the frame. Oh shit, I should have my, uh, I'm going to log in with my phone to my other account. This says, so it shows us having viewers. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> that's funny, there is a delay. Oh shit, that's pretty delayed. Yeah, you want to mute that. Yeah. That was on my phone. I had my phone on doing something. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was wondering if that stayed muted from last time. So what I've been doing with this one instead of keeping it wet, because I always forget. If I did, oh, oops. That's on cat mode. Missed it up. This seems extra soggy. It's probably time to change this paper, even though I just changed it. It feels all greasy and waxy. Alejo Black. Although I think I used German gray last time. Is German gray or black gray? Because it makes it look just like a dirty, kind of a, a scuffed up black kind of action. Just dirty looking. It's almost it's like no black in that, is there? But we'll put a nice wash on it. So do you guys paint all your D and D guys? Um I haven't used any of the minis that we made for D and D yet. Does the rest of your uh, party? No, we used uh, what's it? I'm gonna move this out of the way. Roll twenty. Oh, that's right. You guys have been doing it. Yeah. Man, or uh, uh, the 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 play one that I. That this was be this was be a, is, uh, a tabletop. Oh, There's tabletop a few... simulator. Yeah, tabletop simulator. It's almost like a... another one. It's like a roll twenty, but not quite. Yeah, there's a there's a few of them that seem pretty good. I don't know which ones. I haven't fucked with them all, but there's like two or three of them that now that are competing in that space. Um, weirdly enough, Wizards doesn't own any of them. Hmm. Don't I don't understand how they're still not on that trolley. 
yeah. So how's this look? Can you see the detail of what's going on? Yeah, we can see you paint the boot there. Like it's not super close up, but I guess it doesn't really need to be though, does it? Right. It's more about the technique and watching your brush. That was one thing was uh fly things. I was <laughs> trying way too hard to make minis that were uh like immaculate upon close inspection. And I thought about that and that's kind of pointless because your minis aren't designed to be zoomed in on. They're designed to be looked well, at. Well, especially in an cool. army game yeah. right where you've got a whole bunch of little dudes like you're nobody's ever just picking one up to check out his boot laces and shit <laughs> we call those guys rivet counters <laughs> they're like the rules lawyers it's like well that uh 1939 that particular weapon didn't quite exist not in this configuration like yeah. that's cool we we agree it's it's representing this <laughs> block of stats on our game right okay <laughs> yeah 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 so that's the problem though is like it doesn't matter. And the people I play with, we kind of migrated towards each other because we have what's called wackos. Win at all costs. And those are your Warhammer guys a lot of times. For some reason, the Warhammer crowd just attracts those kind of people. So a bunch of us, we, we play for fun and cinematic and, you know, just experience. But did this thing did this happen? Oh, that's a cool, that's a good roll. Good job, guy. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. It's like you this wiped my shit failure. right out. Was this super cool? <laughs> so that's the, the guys I play with and how I play. But what's funny is uh I'm still all like super <laughs> anal about my accuracy. I even bought a book called like World War II German uniforms or something basic. But it's like I went out and bought the official colors based on the German color wheel at the time. My guys had the correct piping on their shoulder boards, the correct colors on their belts. But like you said, no one's gonna look at his boot laces. But like, but I am, and I'm gonna know they're completely accurate. Like it matters. As long as it's for you. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's like, who are you painting minis for? I gotta remember to keep in focus. So I wonder if I should back out the camera and zoom in, but I don't know. I was surprised to discover this hobby because I never thought I'd be interested in it. Hey, I didn't really know it was a thing. I'd always built models as a kid. But anyways, I found it strangely therapeutic. I wouldn't get DCMA to play some music. Uh, now, so as far as that goes, <laughs> you just play "Happy Birthday" on repeat, or no? That no, one's, you... that one's not public domain, is it? No, yeah, Happy I think we can. Song? You can play music. Um, it'll be. You won't be able to monetize anything. I think is how that works. I I think they take it down. I, there was a thing I was reading today. Some notice was like, by the way, if you stream copyrighted material, you're going to get a warning. You accumulate enough warnings. I mean, I get it. Their lawyers don't want someone else's lawyers all up in their business. It's a shame that's the world we live in. What if we say it's for educational purposes or uh, <laughs> we're doing a parody, an educational parody, but it's so meta, it might not appear at first glance like that's what we're doing. It might look like we're just playing music while we're painting, but no, we're. Uh... Well, I don't know where the line is because <laughs> a lot of a lot of people that I watch play stuff will have yeah. music going or um, buddy there's even Spotify all the time. Yeah, I think. Maybe Spotify is covered, or I mean, I pay for the subscription. <laughs> but no, doesn't it always say like 
specifically to include broadcasting. I mean, the language hasn't changed since we were kids. It always reminds me of episode of Simpsons. It's like, do you have express written consent? Well, I have implied verbal consent. Um, and then there's even some, some of them do whole like, Hey, me and my 200 followers, let's all watch this movie together. Like, yeah, literally just stream a movie That's to a hundred other people. I don't know if there was a, an approved list of movies or something. I don't know. I guess whoever owns Twitch owns the rights to whatever other properties they own. So maybe you can get by like that. it was something that was already streaming then it's not <laughs> uh, like it's not broadcast you that's streaming it <laughs> yeah oh yeah it's just a link to something else yeah <laughs> I started with too much paint on my brush so I have to be very careful This dude's a metal mini, and he seems to have some damage or debris around his boot. The with the yellow, they just they look like little firemen or like. Yeah, it's not very very interesting right now, but I think the yellow helps brighten it, and the reds come out, which will make oh, more sense later. My last batch were some of the best ones I've done so far. I was pretty impressed by how they came out. And you can sure see where you didn't get paint. Yeah, yeah, I can tell where I definitely missed. So I'm going to put over a wash anyways and then go highlight it with the same color. So basically it is going to get a second coat. So I'm not so I'm not super concerned about it. I got the bulk of it. But like we just said, we're not trying to make... Oh, yeah. No, I'm not pointing to anywhere particular. That, but I'm just saying, like, the yellow in general is a good yeah, color. Yeah, color because... <laughs> Well, everything else I had primed in black. These were part of a special project. I was trying to do it when I was underway. I did a batch of Marines that came out phenomenal. I, I tried to recreate it with the Belgians, and it just wasn't happening for some reason. And I had access to you know what I could find when I was on the ship. Because I think I'd already primed them a different color. No. See, I can't remember that far back. There were a bunch I primed, but they came out really bad because I did it in a human environment. So the primer picked up all that moisture in the air, so they had like a, like a ghost aura on them. So they kind of became textured, like they got dropped in sugar. And glued on there. What are you working on tonight? Nothing. Have you done any more of that uh, try hack me? I uh, not really. My computer was having problems. I that wish one. I had the time to stick to that, man, because I really enjoyed that. It was fun, but it's we'd have to a... basically start all over again. Oh uh, yeah, which is oh, I'm fine. With. I'm fine with yeah. that too. Yeah, but... and luckily there was like, I know some of the lessons had because it looks like users were writing some of the classes. Is that correct? Because there are a few topics I saw covered multiple times by multiple people, which isn't bad because I could use the refreshers. A refresher of a refresher now, because I would do want to go back to the very beginning. Yeah, I wonder how much of it. Um, basically, yeah, just like put something together and they'll approve it, and you can get a little bit of cash back for everybody who uses it. I still follow the uh, the Reddit, and they just uh, some dude like got a certificate or something because he completed like some entire portion of it, which I thought was pretty cool.
because it was set up a really cool way. Donk is texting me. What does he want? Oh. Hey, uh, would you do me a favor? Go to the, our primary Discord and uh, text Donk the link to the Discord and the uh, stream, please. You can just copy and paste in Discord, right? I'm not at my terminal. I'm just waiting for someone to come in here and tell me I'm doing it wrong so they can teach me how to do it the right way. Could happen. Well, if I know anything about nerds, is I can't wait to tell someone else. Oh, yeah, so I taped that EL tape up. What do you think about the lighting? Is it better? There's a strip of EL tape directly above the camera. So there should be um, no shadows, right? It's there's a shadow from his hat there around his face and yeah, like the pockets and stuff. But yeah, it's like but there's really, nothing like back detail. Back. Yeah, no, it looks good. And that's like right at the. No, uh, yeah. Is there a way I can maximize my preview window? All right. <clears throat> Did Don get that? I sent it to him. I don't know. He's uh, looks. The rest like is up to him. Up. He can't figure it out. Yeah. Private message to him. Ha! Can do me a favor. Do um, the exact same thing, but to Janice. She literally just <laughs> yeah. texted me. They both just texted me and asked if they can watch. <laughs> uh, she might just text chat. Dang it. I gotta stop doing that. I pull it into my chest and I, I take it off the camera. Oh, that kid, the Miniac, though, he has a really nice camera and a really nice setup. But his boom is long enough that it comes in over his head. But his zoom is so powerful that it's, uh... But he's using an actual DLSR. It's a $600 camera. And he's like, yeah, I kind of spent a bunch of money. But the way it's set up, it's, uh... Friggin' Perfect. But he's also very good at painting, though. I uh, watched all his airbrush tutorial videos. I found them very helpful. One reason I wanted to do this stream is uh, it'll force me to paint my goddamn minis. Because I bought all that synthesizer stuff. I've been cranking through <laughs> that too. Like I said, I can play Top Gun on two different instruments now. But nice. I'm neglecting this shit on my painting. I hardly play video games anymore because it cuts into my music making time and my mini painting time. Which sucks, though, because the, I think the reason we play video games a lot of these days is the social aspect. Getting the whole team together and going and doing something. So it's not just playing the video games. Shit pile, Jesus Christ. 
<laughs> this is a wholesome channel. Yeah, this is a Christian subreddit. <laughs> or was it Discord or Minecraft? Or I can't remember. Yeah, Minecraft server. <laughs> <laughs> We don't discriminate. We hate everyone equally. Ooh, that's runny. I have a tendency to overdo it. My paints are always too thick. So I thin your paints. I said I did, and they said not enough, so I will. As a Belgian rifleman. Actually, I don't know what the Belgian service rifle is. Jamie, look that up. <laughs> That's a joke. Actually, we're doing all the Belgians. They got their uniforms issued last night. Today, we're going to put the boots on. And whatever else we have time for. Whenever my wife gets home and starts nagging me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It's such a delay. You have like line them up so they're just visible as you're completing each one and then you have like a little visual progress bar of oh, guys yeah yeah, yeah my up. little life bar or whatever <laughs> yeah before it was trying to autofocus on them i think i was trying to prevent that There you go. <clears throat> what are you doing, Jay Glamazon? Who is your daddy and what does he do? <laughs> I can subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> Click the link below. There was one guy, he was actually pretty funny. He was like, if you like this video, you know, click like. If you didn't like it, uh, hit dislike twice to show how much <laughs> you really disliked it. He's <laughs> like, yeah, hit the dislike button. Hell, hit it two or four times. Let me text Donk. He is also short bus material. Oh, you didn't go to the gym? I have baths at the gym. Gross. You mean the pool? The hot tub? The the human stench bath? Get in the get in the shallow end to get your shampoo <laughs> get going. <laughs> Actually, um, I've been in a lot of gyms that have signs saying not to do that. Yeah. I feel because someone's done that. And then argued about it, and you didn't have the sign there to point to to say, don't do that. Pointing to signs is a strong <laughs> argument winner.
All right, dog's having trouble figuring out what we're doing. Oh, my dog's barking. Woof. Buzz, your girlfriend. Woof. Huh. Actually, did you know in that scene, that was the director's son dressed as a girl because they didn't want to be mean to any real girl? <laughs> That's funny. It is pretty funny. They didn't... <laughs> Buzz, your girlfriend, woof. I think I said that to a guy in real life once recently. Am I doing this off camera again? I guess I'm just going to have to buy that $600 camera. <laughs> I mean, this is my livelihood now, you know? I'm just going to put food on the table. Right. You got to spend money to make money. Yeah, yeah. It's the first rule of business. It's called making money moves. <laughs> you got to manifest that shit, you know what I'm saying? Power perceived is power perceived, or <laughs> some shit like that. Don't find us. Yay. Yeah, I guess anyone that comes in here, they'll see the Discord link and they can just join the call. Did you add it to something? Uh, <laughs> here we go. It asks you uh, if uh, yeah to link your socials. And it like already knew what a Discord link was, so it formatted it and shit. Gave it the little icon. Oh, it's Adam somewhere. Tour. Yeah, I don't know how any of that works. Tour call here, hold on. Oh, that's right. We're not in the actual. Okay. Did not what? And there is a delay. <laughs> that's why uh, viewers will be uh, able to join the call until we get like super famous, and then we're gonna have to like really, you know, turn it down because you can't have. You know, six, seven million people all trying to jump in one call. In your pandalurium. Um, I think to add him to this call gonna make it's gonna make you click buttons regardless so we can either just go to the channel the voice channel or oh, okay else you uh let's could. just drop down a level i guess is that easier yeah that's probably yeah because we have guests now. and shit too it'd be easier for them to... that does make sense okay dismiss all this jesus okay I'll see you down there. It's making me save all these things I don't want to deal with right now. What are you saving? It's making me like make some choices about crap. All right. We'll In Discord? On. Yeah, it's like, do you want to do this? Do you want to show your boost? Do you want to do this? I haven't really hit all the buttons in here, so just <laughs> trying to walk me through it and teach it. How's that? Okay. Oh, okay, there it goes. That was weird because it wasn't making, didn't make the doo doo sound. I thought my mic failed again. Can you hear me? Oh, crap. Because I don't hear you. Oh. Oh, there we go. Nothing changed. What happened? 
nothing changed. What do you mean? Well, you sh- you shouldn't have new issues because nothing changed. You shouldn't. But I've been having a lot of problems with uh, Logitech and Discord lately. They just don't get along. And it's been the weirdest, most obnoxious thing. I thought it was because they had too many sound devices, so I took them all out and connected them to my laptop. <laughs> I don't know. It just doesn't like it. If I mute my mic, Discord forgets how to use my microphone. But if I go to Windows Sounds, I uh, I can see the, the microphone bar. Like, it's picking up audio. And the audio test in Windows, but Discord's <laughs> like, oh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, that thing you were using moments ago? No, oh, no, 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 never seen it. Donk, you can join the voice chat. This is a shooting the shit while doing stuff stream. But since no need losers have hobbies anyone wants to look at. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> He's pooping, he says. Ah, there we go. Yeah, please don't. <laughs> Jesus, are they farting in the bathroom? See this part I'm all trying to get that I can barely see and or read. Nope. No one's ever going to see. You're no too low. Ah, see, I got to quit doing that. But that's my workspace, though, so I want to just move the camera. Figure it out to where, where you're going to be comfortably working and have that be on. Well, the see, that's the problem. That's what I was thinking about because there's depends on what I'm doing. Well, that's not too bad. Now, for me, it's actually pretty good. Yeah, seems fine. Tub thumping. <laughs> Do you frequently get knocked down? But then get up again. Then maybe tub thumping is for you. Since I quit drinking. Oh, no more tub thumping for you. <laughs> You're not supposed to let that keep you down, you know? Ah, okay. I mean, it's hard to have. <laughs> I don't feel like I have anything to look forward to since I quit drinking. What? Donk doesn't know what tub thumping is? Jesus. What are you, like 12? Were you born after 1991? Wait, were you? Hey, how old are you? You're Benjamin's age, so you've got to be in your mid to late 30s. I feel like, oh, that's right. I, I don't know how old Benjamin or Nicole are, so I know it's not as high as me. Yeah, I know. You're born in 86. I was going to say. Oh, you're born in 87, Glamazon? That's okay. I didn't even learn my own dad's birthday until a few years ago. <laughs> I have to go back every year. I go back to my uh, passport application to remind myself. <laughs> That's when is, when's my dad's birthday? 
Ooh, your paint's a little too thin right there. Is what playing? Tub Thumper? I was hoping somebody would play it. But I hear it though. Uh, you can join the Discord. That's the voice call. Yep. You, you have to do it on actually on Discord though. Yeah, yeah. You have to do it in Discord. So since you got a an invite to our super secret ninja special Discord. Oh dude, there is an old uh you know, Saturday Night Live with Horatio Sands. And they're making fun of MTV. He's like, it's on the new MTV too. How do you get MTV2? If you just turn on your TV this there, you're cool enough. <laughs> oh, I mangled that joke. He said, yeah. How do I get MTV2? You can only get it if you're cool enough. How do I know if I'm cool enough? You turn on your TV and there it is. Because I'm pretty sure that's how we all got MTV2, right? That brief time. I up. never had cable. I did. And then I returned my cable box because I didn't want to pay 12 bucks a month to rent TV. Uh, Glamazon, you can join the call. Discord links in the description. It is He's all I'll set. I'll send to everyone. Oh, there it goes. Some like the voice of Darth Vader. That's what it sounded like. Calm down, wife lady. <laughs> Who has a soundboard? So what pieces are you working with? So I'm doing Belgian infantry, early war. Around, uh, was it 1939? Is that a foregrip that you've modded? Uh, yeah, yeah, I totally modded this from... No, I wish. But that's basically what it is, though, isn't it? Yeah. Nah, dude, someone made these. <laughs> and it's basically one of the best tools I have. Right. Everybody else just uses Silly Putty and a soda cap. <laughs> I'm, I'm not exaggerating. Guess it's effective. Oh, this is this is the kind of stuff that we get to know. We get to talk about what's going on. Exactly. So, Donk, you should hmm. look up what the Belgian service rifle was in World War Two. Because we were just uh, talking about it. We actually don't know what rifle this is. Uh, I think it could be British or it could be French. I think it's a, um, it's a rifle. That, that is correct. Probably 30. Yeah. Hour. Well, <laughs> if you'll remember, was it Fabrique Nationale that we get our BAR from is in Belgium. That's why one of your squad members uh. is equipped with the Brown and Automatic Rifle. It's still pretty bright because of the yellow primer. You can't really see it very well. But this dude, he's the BAR Rifleman in the squad. So, the uh, Belgian Mauser model 1935 was the typical uh, infantry rifle of World War II. It was a Mauser? Yes. Wow. Built in 1935. I was going to say, they must have bought model those uh, before, before, before the party started. Um, okay, so you want to know before? No, like no, World no, War One? No, 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 no. That was that was a joke. They fought the Germans with weapons they bought from the Germans. I'm assuming that transaction completed long before hostilities began. Sure, sure. Yeah, they definitely sold to uh, Nazi Germany and Peru and Argentina. Oh, uh, was there anything special about the Belgian Mauser? Was it a special edition Mauser rifle? Let's see. Or was it just... Was it a knockoff K98? Is that basically what it is? But no, it's 1935, right? Yeah. So I guess it's technically newer than the K98.
that actually did so. <laughs> Belgian Armed Forces had adopted the Mauser model in 1889, locally produced after the First World War. They defeated Germany, gave numbers of Mauser G98s and Car 98s to the kingdom. So they actually ran with Car 98s for a while. Interesting. And then in the late 1920s and 30s, uh, Fabrique Nationale was manufacturing the FN24 and Model 30. Okay. And that stopped VAR, because... Like we just said. Yeah. But they stopped that because of... Uh, right. Funding. <laughs> Sniper version was also developed before the war. Yeah, I don't think Belgium really had time to... Uh produce anything of their own i mean they, again they produced the bar though but the americans used all through the war so that's crazy because they got steamrolled pretty early on i think the yeah. uh, i read somewhere uh the germans were coming and the british and the french decided not to help the belgians and they wanted the, uh, the germans to break on belgium because hmm. they thought the germans would be weakened after that and then they'd come in and have an easy time and they kind of yeah. let, they let Belgium get tits up. Yep. Man, this is too much paper. Ooh. Okay, so the Belgian uh, army adopted the 1935, but the 19 never the 1935 never went into large scale production. It oh, really? served during World War II alongside the Fusil Model 1936. Oh, the a Fusil. model. Mm -hmm. It's a model 1889 upgraded with some of the features of the model 35. Okay. So there you go. Well, that's cool. Oh, we had two viewers just leave. Um, I am hearing it in the background, so I have it paused. Did, it, did a viewer come back? No, oh, it's probably just you guys. It's all of us, I'm pretty sure. Well, I, I have it paused because I, I hear oh, me yeah. talk yeah, after I talk, the and then yeah, mute the stream. You ever heard someone call a radio show and they're like, "Please turn down your radio." Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I can hear you just fine. <laughs> yeah. Right. You don't understand. That's a feedback loop. Pause the stream there. What's that? Oh, yeah, you can pause it. and It's supposed to save them. Uh, uh, Zero, I think you're correct in saying that you didn't hit the switch until afterwards or halfway through. Yeah. Okay, we were we were pretty midstream by the time that I... That's probably got to be it. Because I was curious. I was like... I wonder what it looks like afterwards, because I didn't look at the analytics for anything last night. So I did this morning when I was drinking my coffee. I was like, oh yeah, did it save our video? And it's like, no. I go to the settings, auto save videos, on. I was like, well, that's interesting. Yeah, I turned it on mid midstream, but it didn't. I think it has to be on before that. So Perhaps. We'll know tonight. Or probably tomorrow. And it might be that they don't save it and clog up their servers with shit until you, uh, you know. Yeah, I was wondering about that there. too. Like, <laughs> your one hour video that no one looked at. Yeah. That's all right. We're we all actually, here. we had five unique viewers, and you and me only count for two of them. And Crut. So we had two unique viewers. Listen to that. <laughs> We're famous. The very what else do you want to know? Narrow um, so actually, the uh, squad leader carries an SMG, one of those weird old looking World War II, World War One looking ones, hmm. from Battlefield One. Heard you for a second there. Who's that? So J Dog. Oh, she joined the call. Here you go, Donk. This is the submachine gun. It's, it's still. Uh, I'm not looking at the stream right now. Uh, I don't even think you can see it. It's too bright because of the primer. Oh god. 
don't think you can even see it in here. Yeah, it just looks like a yellow piece of plastic. Yeah, it's it's too bright at the moment. Yeah. But the uh, magazine feeds in from the left side. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Uh, the Belgians, so I did a, a giant German army, and then I discovered everyone does that. So I was tired of playing Germans versus the Germans all the time. So I started branching mm -hmm. out to different armies. So then I made, I said, no more big armies. So I went and built a giant Marine Corps army in the Pacific. Um, Guadalcanal specific. Uh, everything was specific to the Guadalcanal theater. Mm -hmm. So then my Belgians, I said, okay, no more big armies. So I'm going to try to do a small force of the Belgians. And luckily, they didn't have a whole lot of crazy stuff. So all I need is like an armored car and maybe a tank. But they had French artillery. That was kind of their thing. So I got to go buy some French guns. Uh, one of their national characteristics is they get to bring one free medium artillery or smaller in addition to their artillery. So if you're planning to get someone that likes to mass up his dudes... Barber effect. <laughs> so the submachine gun hmm. mm -hmm. of Belgium. Yeah. Oh, this is this is from the, or something. Right. This was the 1950s to the 1950s. You can, so. but you're controlling on that. <laughs> oh, if only I had more hands, like that guy from Total Recall. <laughs> So, hmm. well, that was after the war. Yeah, we're at, uh, I have some Korean stuff. Actually, what I have for Korea is the 4077. Hmm. Yeah, here's even, uh, uh, same company, both action miniature or war gaming. Um, Warlord Games, I'm sorry. But yeah, here's uh, was a Hawkeye in his robe with his uh, martini. <laughs> Took a spill. There, it's great. They even got uh, Corporal Klinger <laughs> in his nurse's outfit. Oh wow! Yeah, so those are gonna be a lot of fun to paint. That's all I got for Korea. I got some Vietnam Marines. I got a bunch of modern stuff. I got a bunch of pirates. I got uh, some Lewis and Clark, kind of uh, into the North American wild. So there's no shortage of random shit that need painted on here. I got robots for some reason, diesel-powered robots. Now we're talking. I'm actually pretty excited about those. I don't know what it is, but Panzer mechs have always fascinated me. Not even Panzer mechs. I'm sure by now everyone's seen the the models of the crabs. The guy turned into tanks. I think it was a Japanese artist. He took yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he just glued bits and pieces onto them, but they, it was freaking awesome. There's a few in the series. They were even featured like in a museum or something, or some sort of not a museum, but some sort of exhibit. Because I saw a photo. They were behind glass with like. The description card and all that. They're behind glass because they smell. I was going to say also because they smell like seawater and rotting fish. <laughs> After having worked on a crab boat, I can tell you exactly what that smells like. Hmm. A dirty ass fish tank, but it's salty. So like the aquarium. Also, yeah, yeah. Well, the aquariums are usually pretty well kept up. But imagine like just a dirty ass goldfish tank. You ever seen those that don't get cleaned in a long time and it stinks up the house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bowl of poop water in your room. That's oh, so that submachine gun, I looked it up. It was the MI 34 PN. Oh, really? 
Yeah, because I feel like the Belgians didn't have a whole array of stuff. But at the same time, though, a lot of these, if you look at in the history, like everyone just used kind of what they could get their hands on. And everyone was, I mean, this is still, it was new technology at the time, I guess. So everyone's just selling crap back and forth to each other. Or they all bought it from the same vendors, too. Like you said, Belgium well, used the mountains. We know who they got the bar from. Yeah, and then like the Germans used the Citroën trucks. It looks like everyone mm-hmm. used every truck they can get. So, any uh, time period appropriate vehicle would still be appropriate for theater. I tried doing my Marines as uh, paratroopers, but they traveled so light. Like me and Zero were talking earlier, we're trying to give us some historical accuracy. And they didn't have anything. They had like Jeeps and the Johnson machine gun that no one's ever heard of. <laughs> so no willies, huh? Yeah, they didn't really have a whole lot. They should be fast and maneuverable. And they never actually did a drop. I think the Navy just brought them to the island. <laughs> The problem with some of these medals is it gets all wonky. I don't think. If I can't tell, then you definitely can't tell where the pants end and the boot begins. On the back leg here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to see anything. Exactly. So I'm not going to worry about it. But you should worry about it because once you start putting stills up and everything else, you're going to want to. Yeah, that's what we're talking about, too. These aren't supposed to be zoomed in on. They're supposed to be seen from three feet away. Because there was this guy, he posted these minis online, and they were phenomenal. Some of the best work I'd seen. Mm -hmm. He used, like, visual tricks. When you zoomed in closely, it looked like they were colored with a crayon. But when you zoomed out and looked at them from a table's distance, like you're supposed to see them, like the colors blended together perfectly and transitions and very elaborate work. But again, if you zoomed in, it looked kind of like dog shit. Right. (laughs) That's what I realized, like, you're not really supposed to up close and analyze a, a dude who's barely an inch tall. It's not going to be super detailed no matter how hard you try. Oh, I'm sure you could do it. Oh, yeah, you totally can. Every now and then I'll try to make a couple guys phenomenal. But what I notice right. also is a lot of those guys that do a really good job, they're also using much bigger miniatures. This guy's 28 millimeter and uh, 75. I saw a bunch of guys doing 75 millimeter stuff recently. Oh, those, geez. those were huge, yeah. And I don't know the metric system, so I have to think about bullets. So I know 12.7 is half an inch, right? And then I just have to go from there. I thought J Dog was going to jump in the chat. She was here for a second. I sounded like maybe there is a technical poop hiccups. Bathtub, and now she's gonna go deal with it before I see it. No, but probably like running the Discord and the stream on your phone is. Oh yeah. Not real intuitive. Nope. Like I think she was one of the ones that dropped out. That's what it was. Her trying to switch over. So you're running your stream off of a phone or the the logitech oh no that's uh j dog she's uh trying to remotely view us i'm using the logitech zero where are you at i'm at my are you just like are you just doing like tactical support or what are you doing well my so my thought was that we'd be on a call like this and he'd have broadcast his video over discord and then i capture it and kind of run the channel right okay. oh are you, does it not able you to do that like this no i can't i have no input at all oh, there's shit. only one street. So maybe we should try it that way next time because if you if you're locked out of all the controls yeah it's whoever's broadcasting has okay. has the controls so you when you hit go live that's you right? yeah yeah, yeah. So. but you want to pull the feed that makes more sense we can try that it says we're going to sacrifice a lot of FPSs, but I don't think we need a lot of FPSs. I'm not moving very fast. 
Or is it F's per S? <laughs> Sound is terrible. Oh, that's just Dunk's voice. Yeah, no, it's it's me. But so <laughs> Jackass. <laughs> so the uh if zero was so you would run the stream or you would run the camera, zero would run the stream, but then like when you get like the, the questions of, you know, what rifles did the Belgian army use, he could bring that up and then screen share it. I think so. That way, Talk, if you had or uh, zero, if you had control, you could throw up like images and stuff, right? Very easily. Pull like up a website or that would be yeah, cool. Switch I know, between shit. Well, right now on my other screen, I have up um, images of German uh, Belgian uniforms. Yeah, or like when I was saying, like, what color is that? And then I could put a little cube up and a little that's text cool. block that says what color you're using. Oh, that's pretty neat. So you would just need to be able to stream it, but he'd need to have control over it. Now we or we had it working once, but I I wanted to see something, and didn't realize I was. Oh, so you, it's it's your fault. You're just messing. Kind of. I don't know how any of this shit works. Hmm. I just want to paint my tanks. <laughs> well, and if we were playing, if we're playing a game, then then where everybody's involved or something, then it's yeah, it doesn't matter too who, too much who's running it because well, we're all be most engaged. But. Miniature painters are miniature war gamers, so there's probably a lot of overlap in the war game community. So I think we're going to play Axis and Allies online, maybe sometime this week. I only fired it up and did the tutorial. But I played the shit. Actually, Donk? My, no, I don't think so. We played the shit out of that game in real life back when I was in high school. Back in the day. But those fights would last days. Like someone's parents would go to town and all we would do is just play Axis and Allies. <laughs> one game and we never finished it I think we finished it once because I got routed off of Germany escaped to South America made a <laughs> shaky alliance with the Americans it was promptly betrayed <laughs> zeros Jamie yeah <laughs> but I want to order him to look stuff up So there's such a delay, I don't know what she's talking about because I've already forgot. Just playing board games. Just, just Oh, I know what she's talking about. Just no, enjoying board games. We yeah, we just, just had some <laughs> friendly board games. <laughs> a couple of friends what was that? staying what was up that for three one days time? playing board games and nothing yeah, else. Well, <laughs> what, what was that? What was that thing that uh, your mom said that one time? We were sneaking out. Oh, and it was, no, we weren't sneaking out. We just walked out the front door. Oh well, yeah, yeah, but it was, it was. Oh, hey, yeah, what yeah. are you? What are you guys going? We're like, you know, we're gonna go, we're gonna go do, do drugs, drugs and kill people and do sure. something stupid. And she, are you wearing shoes? <laughs> That's hilarious. They said, where are you boys going? I said, did you do drugs? She's like, are you wearing shoes? Because it was nighttime? I don't know. We were like 15 at the time. That was 30 years ago. No, that was 25 years ago. Yeah, 25. That <laughs> was play Axis and Allies for days. We did play Axis and Allies for days. Now, what enabled us to persist and march on is another story. All right. So the boots are almost done. We'll switch to a more interesting color here. Shall we? I'm really behind on my painting. I want to do my moderns. I've been writing a campaign for uh, Spectre. Hmm. And uh, the problem is I wrote the campaign before I had all the stuff for it. So I wrote something so elaborate it required me to go out and basically... Buy hundreds of dollars of hobby accessories and supplies. <laughs> and as you'll soon see if you continue to watch the show, is that most of that stuff's still in boxes. That's good. That's real good. Actually, I have the the Black Sight Studios. I have the bank still in the box. That's like one of the biggest ones they make. I need to. Oh, uh, I need to put that together. Yeah, because I already have. I have uh, three of the civilian residences. 
I have a bar, I have the machine shop, a broken Home Depot. Oh, and I have this giant ass uh, fancy apartment building, but it looks like it would easily double as an office space. But my buddy keeps shaming me into finishing my Belgians. Well, is, is your buddy is your is your buddy uh part owner of your stream or is it somebody else? <laughs> no, it's uh my buddy Marcus. I have no investment in this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not emotionally invested well, in any of this. Well, if he's if if Marcus isn't watching the stream right now, he can kiss off. Uh he's got like a kids and crap. He'll actually probably be on it. Um he used to paint for Games Workshop. So we really want to get him on here. I can I can put up a stream of me painting my walls. Does that count? Uh, maybe for people trying to fall asleep. I'm sure it's great. <laughs> my buddy, he's a... People like a time lapse. You do yeah, like right? the... Uh, yeah, there you go. I want to say yeah, just record it. Then... He was famous a long time ago. Now he's just a streamer. So he's telling me, he's like, dude, people watch my stream to fall asleep. I got no delusions or interpretations about what's going on here. People watch my shit to pass out. So well, apparently there's a market for streams to fall asleep to. See, but that's the thing. Is The good thing is that stream's going to keep going, and that view is still going to be there up until you end the stream, because he ain't going nowhere. Right. I need a razor blade. There's a flash on this muff. I don't want to put... Where's my razor blade at? I think it's in your uh, Access and Allies box last I saw. <laughs> ah, here we go. Here's one of the several I have laying around. Just little chunks of metal. That's wrong with the metals is sometimes they're really detailed. It's all one piece. So they also lend themselves to catastrophic failure. Now I lost the paintbrush I was using. Yeah, the yellow is reflecting this light terribly, so I want to get something darker so it looks more like something you guys can see. But I do all the big shit first because I can do it all sloppy because I know where I'm going to go over with other colors so I can be fast and loose with my boots. Yeah, I think I'm going to. That'd probably be a good idea. I just, uh, I ripped some EL tape off of uh, this light box I had because it was like a cheap $12 Chinese jank off of Amazon. <laughs> so I have two bread twisty ties holding it to the boom that is supporting my. Yeah, I saw the link. I'm going to have to check it out. Is that the one you think that worked best? That should be good enough for those boots. All right. Well, it's already been an hour. That's crazy. It does go by. See, this is either too thick or too wet. There's no... I got to change the paper on this, I think, on my wet palette. But I'm going to go over it again anyways and darken it later. So it almost doesn't matter a whole lot. Like you said, in an army with 30 other guys that look exactly the same, it looks perfect. It's that whole see the forest for the trees or all that shit.
Doc, what have you been working on lately? Did he die? Maybe. Hmm. No, I was muted in the Discord. Uh, uh, had some cheering. family issues. Kids. Yeah. Like that. AKA the wife. They're a blessing. Anyway, so. <laughs> yes. So no, so stuff I've been working on. I just finished out the pot holder. I sent you a picture on that. Yeah. Got, so um, when you say pot holder, it sounds less cool than it really is. Um, it's pretty neat. <laughs> got the a wood and iron, uh, pot holder, <laughs> but it's a big ass wood and iron thing that hangs from his ceiling over his kitchen island and supports his uh, pots and pans. Yeah. So it's a uh, old piece of cedar. <clears throat> it was a pallet actually at one point. Really? Yep. And we stripped down five or six of these pallets uh, out at the farm, and I took these these four by sixes back. And I that piece of timber was huge. I didn't realize that was. Oh it, it, yeah, it's yeah. It was originally from a pallet, so so it's cedar. So it's not like it's not oak. It's not like super heavy. Right. Um. But, you know, prepped it, sanded the corners, put, put the plane on it for a little bit. On a couple of, it kind of bowed on a knot, so I didn't really necessarily want that. So, mm. not on that piece, anyway. Um, Use all hand tools, right? Yeah, yeah. The plane is- so, yeah, I do, yeah, I got a couple hand planes um, that I go through and my buddy actually built me a draw knife. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, so that's he, for, uh, uh, if I remember correctly, that's like the long kind of curved one. It's used for like, you kind of pull it towards you to take bark off of stuff. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a remover. It definitely is designed to, like, I mean, it can be used to finish some, some areas, but really it's, it's your finishing is your sanding. Right. So on and so forth. So it's really just, it's not a precision tool. Per se, in the hands of the right person, it could be, but it's really, not. But it's really for like shearing off chunks of shit really fast. Yeah, yeah, you're trying to get cool. down to your working zone, you know. You oh, okay, that makes sense. Theory. So it's easier just to, you know, well, with modern tools, it's easier to use tools, but you know, yeah, the draw knife is still used in some today, like they still debark trunks at the mill. That's cool. So it's still a very relevant tool. Um, but I didn't have well, I had one, but it was it was a hanging piece for the farm. So we went and, and you know, dolled it up and, and sharpened it up and right. cleaned it and stained it and all the rest. And then I sent all the my buddy he owns a knife making company, so he's like, hey, you know, I need a, a um, like a crazy special hard project. And I was like, yeah, make me a draw knife. Nice. So sent him. Some uh, some dimensions, some pictures and whatnot, angles of the blade and all the rest. And mm-hmm. True shit. He he made me a. Oh, you even gave him uh, the angles. That's cool. Yeah. Yep. The angles. It's all about angles. But um, you know, it's it's. Was it the, the five eighty or I don't know what steel stock it is. That he's got. I don't really know how that works. Is like the higher the number, the harder it is, or the more flexible it is, or what? I know, was it honestly pretty popular for like? Mm, I, I, no, I I don't know. I, it, for me, it's it's I'm, I'm trying to base my knowledge on something like force and fire. I don't really ask him too much about his steels, um, especially when the knife is given to me. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just curious. You could have made it out of aluminum for all I could. Forty is like I don't know. That's pretty cool. So, um, but then he sent it out to his leather guy who made it a made a sheath out of it or for it. Just clips around the blade with push buttons and leather. Oh, that's cool. So, but yeah, I mean, anyway, really drawing that point there, but I had to knock down a little bit of the hump out of that that beam, and then 
got some cast iron hooks and spaced them out. In fact, I was talking to you when I was spacing them out, Mark. Right. Yeah, yeah. Them. And then just some black chain and black mounts the ceiling. And the way she wrote, she hangs. It looks holds really good. 10 pans. Now, it's hanging from I the ceiling, it. though, by chains, right? Yeah, yeah. So, what I did for the like hardware side of the kitchen? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, um, no, so I uh, actually, to hang the actual. Um, That's going to get cool. I don't care about that. The, the, to hang the actual beam, I only have the ceiling mounts of the ceiling. And then there's carabiners on, like they're little square plates with holes, four holes for the screws. Yeah. And an enclosed loop. That way you can hook to the mount with your chain. Right. And then. Um, so you can take that off and uh, leave the hooks in the ceiling. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So on the holder side, on the hanger, um, I use some old bolts from miscellaneous parts from the farm or, or other farms that are in the family or whatever, just some old rusted bolts and stuff like that that I cleaned up nice. and I actually had some, some oh, leather. So it's all or, asymmetrical? No, it's all different. That's cool. Especially, especially the bolt heads. The bolt heads are, you know, they've been hammered on and everything. So they've got that original. Oh, they're all deformed. And then the rings, the rings I welded, to those bolts uh, from carriage tack, an old horse and carriage. Yeah, the old school. The tack that goes, yeah, it was, it was a four horse <laughs> string. That's cool. And we cut all the D rings out of it and had to put those bolts through and weld it while it was attached to the piece because there's no way for me to get those the, the loops through the holes that I drilled. So I had to you know, wrap it up in leather and whatnot, welding the dirt when I did the burns. So. so I got one more for you, Doc. If you look here, I don't know if you can see the stream. This piece is actually a three-man uh, medium machine gun team. So that's just the gun on the table there? And the yeah, main yeah, yeah. screen? Here's the guys. Eventually, they'll all share that base together. You have the loader. Oh, okay. Looks like one guy's changing a barrel. and one, or, No, one guy's a spotter, one guy's the loader, and one guy's actually firing the weapon. But it looks like a Maxim machine gun. It does. It, it look right. I don't know if you can see mm -hmm. that. So why don't you pull that one up? What kind of machine gun is it? I'm saying it's a Maxim based on what it looks like. So. But isn't there one more that looks? Sure, like do a you want to do that part? <laughs> I don't know what you want to do. He doesn't have control of that right now, so it'll be next next time. There's no links for it anyway. But yeah, can... there's no actually doing that right now. <laughs> if you've got a database, you go to for stuff like that. <laughs> just read the info. Yeah, well, Google. <laughs> well, <clears throat> it's hilarious. All right, they all got their boots on. So let's see. Well, let's see what color is next. Oops. The light machine guns. They use the Lewis, which is probably what that one is. This should the be Browning. A should be a medium. Oh, it's, it yeah. looks like it's water cooled. Yeah, it's a water cooled medium machine gun. Ooh, is it a Vickers? Oh, probably because remember I said the British. Yeah. Yeah, most likely. Yep, that's what it is. I'm looking at it right now. Awesome. So that's the Vickers, but they also used uh, the Hotchkiss M1914. Oh. This is a pretty, pretty dope one. What does that look like? Uh, it's a cross between like that. Well, let me see. Uh, it's a big, uh, it's a dish, it's a dish fed. Oh, One of okay, those, okay. Um, yeah. Stalin's record players kind of looking like a dish, but can. bigger. Yeah. So it's up on an elevated tripod. It's a pretty decent. That's cool. Well, let's do the, the helmets now because they're bright F and yellow and look stupid. And what color did I use for that last time? We're going to use uh, olive brown. So these colors are cool. I really like these ones because uh, 
you look at this number right here, that's like the official number, um, the paint code for the time. Yeah, yeah. I don't really know the American ones or the other ones. For instance, the Germans, though, I know all too well. The RAL, like 7021, black gray. I think it's also called anthracite gray. They painted a lot of their stuff that color. Um, like these, these are the official colors of the German tanks. 7028, if you look it up, that's the official color, the base coat of German tanks in late war. Uh, they were actually primed nope. in this color. Yeah, so this color right here, all right. I told you I'm a, not quite a rivet counter, but almost. The 8017, mm -hmm. that's, uh, this is the, the, literally the color they prime the tanks in. So if you ever see a picture of a German mm -hmm. tank and it's all red, that's just a primer. That's mm -hmm. that, uh, the anti-rust coating like you're probably used to, uh, Dunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the anti-fouling paint. Mm -hmm. So it's cool because Vallejo, yeah, you can get literally the exact same color as it was historically. That's actually really cool. I, I think it's really neat. Uh, matching German tanks or uh, American tanks too. They got their own billion shades of green. Yeah. So it's cool. Still to do. The actual, yeah. What's funny is. As you're uh, trying to research it, it's like, well, the 1950s, they added more brown. Well, the Vietnam, there was more green. And then you're trying to track down which one you actually want. Because they all could be the right answer, but what time? Perfect. So we're going to deploy some of this other paint. Oh, with this Corona shit, man, uh, Vallejo's been really hard to get. Our friendly local game store stopped carrying it. We carry uh, hmm. this new shit now called something 76, something like that. I don't know. I'm going to fuck it up and say it wrong. But it's weird because for historics, I guess uh, it's made in Spain. And I guess they only run that, that, that company makes all kinds of paint. I was told. This is what the guy at the store told me. Um, mm -hmm. I, 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 mean, I trust a guy. He's really smart. I mean, he's educated about his hobby. <laughs> and he's also in the Marines. So he has some interesting stories. Okay. But they, <laughs> they only make this paint like one month out of the year. And with this Corona shit. This year was not your mm. year. Oh, so, so the green you're saying? Yeah, all these colors. Yeah. Because no yeah, one else, so... you can get paints all day long, but they have stupid names like, I don't know. D and D bullshit, Wildwood Wicked or oh. dumb shit. So what I what I've heard from other manufacturing companies, right, mm -hmm. is that was it uh, Ranger Green or a lot of the greens are coming out of what, say Portugal or something like that. Really? Yeah. So like the OD Green is really hard to come by, and like. Uh, oh, the the webbing and the, the color comes from all different materials or whatever. Right. So for the original source, it being you know Portugal or whatever country it is that that applies this color to products to send send out mm -hmm. is hit. It's super hard. I don't know whether it's it's COVID thing or or what. But they uh, the supply shortage. Yeah, it's it's definitely that color. Is definitely hard to come by. Well, was it was something I thought I, of while learning how to do these minis? Just being exposed to so many colors, and just color in general is like, go make green. How are you, how are you going to go outside and make green? Like right. And I think a lot of this, just the base materials are maybe unavailable. I don't know. Maybe they found ways to synthesize color that's super fast. Back in the day, that shit was made out of natural stuff, like uh, the old. Um, the Pope's robes or the cathedral, not cathedral. What the hell? The... But the cardinals and bishops and shit. Mm -hmm. You see them often wearing purple. And purple is a color that's supposed to be indicative of opulence and shit. Well, anyways, I guess that color came from like mollusks or some shit. So at the time, if you had purple, mm -hmm. that means you had access to some kind of shellfish. I think it was a mollusk. It was something in the water. And they guard those secrets of how they got that dye out of whatever it was. Right. Super hard too. So uh, I saw the same with African cultures in the uh, United States actually. 
and they were making and uh, dyeing their clothes using the traditional methods. And they she took like indigo root and ground it up, and it made this vibrant ass like blues and purples. It was pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. And it was all uh, natural. And I was suddenly like, oh shit, these guys are in charge of everything. <laughs> look at look at that blue. God, these yeah. guys know what's Whoa. going on. Makes my makes my brown leather look like shit here. Yeah, right. <laughs> what, you don't like my bread bags? So that's interesting. I stopped focusing too much on the parts oh. that you'll never see. I had to hop out. I'm getting a phone call. Roger that. Never mind. <laughs> Boring conversation. I'm looking for something. Game likely. Man, it's so dumb. If you want to get put on like the do not call register, you have to like print some shit out, fill it out, mail it in. And even then it's only good for a year. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Change my phone number. Yeah, I recommend just get make, getting a number belonging to a state that you haven't resided in for 10 years, and then it's very obvious whenever. Oh, yeah, my spam call is from Colorado. I don't <laughs> yeah. live in Colorado. And doesn't that make it super easy? Yeah, you're like, nope. And it's always some weird mountain town that's like nowhere near anywhere mm-hmm. I've even been. <laughs> yeah. Like, nope. What are the chances that some distant relative I have is in danger somewhere out there? No. Probably if yeah, it yeah. is, they'll call back. Well, it was funny the other day. I was uh, I was actually in the bathroom at the time. <coughs> Excuse me, at work, and uh, so I had a friend who was overseas in Europe. And then I got a call from Russia, and I was like, "What the fuck? I'm not answering that." <laughs> and uh, so I text my friend. I was like, "Are you in trouble?" But it ended up being they left a vo- long ass voicemail. And it was sure as shit the goddamn extended warranty guys. Oh, shit. Yeah. <clears throat> shit, it's 10 o'clock. Central time. Let me finish these helmets then. We'll call it a night. I feel productive. The pirates are going to be fun to paint. Because the problem with all these uniformed guys is they all look the same. And if you want to do historically accurate, you have to do it a certain way. And the colors are almost already chosen for you. But, say pirates or uh, anything, D&D, you're only limited by your imagination. Especially with the Germans, everything's like that dark gray. That dark, dark gray-green. So eventually like, mm-hmm. you put some red on something. Come on now. Yeah, let me use a color. The Americans, oh my god, everything is the same color. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, but it's boring. (laughs) So I guess people really like painting Napoleonics because they're super vivid colors. But that's just a conflict I don't really care about. Right. Even like the American Civil War. I know it's very important for history, but I just don't care. It's not that interesting. But those were the times where you needed, you know, colorful uniforms, colorful ensigns. Because communications and signaling was a pain in the ass. Little drummer boys and shit. (laughs) 
I can do. Okay. Hmm. What happened? I didn't realize that CRISPR was in, or CRISP or whatever was in uh, Discord Mobile too. It's oh, is it? Yeah. That's cool. I love that app or that extension. I don't know. It's built into Discord, whatever you want to call it. Feature. Feature. There you are. <laughs> See, you're getting neat. Sure. <laughs> I need more paint. And I hmm? am going to, uh, I'm going to have to abandon you folks this That's evening. Fine. I'm going to go. We're not far off ourselves. Sure, sure. Well, cool. This is great, man. Yeah, man, for sure. We just need more people doing cool shit, and we'll, uh, someday we'll have a show. Yes, sir. But as long as everyone's getting through their shame piles, that's what we're here for. <laughs> so whatever the shit you've been letting sit around, you've been looking at, you know, you got some, maybe you've been draping dirty laundry on for the last year and a half. Well, time to unpile it and let's go. Right. Well, righteous gents, well, thanks for the invite and whatnot. Yeah, for sure. We'll catch you on the next one. Tell your friends. Always. Adios. Later, brother. Nate. See ya. So how does this work for you? Because you can do literally anything else by the things running in the background. Yeah, I was putting on, I, I added us a actual working Discord button to the channel page. Oh, is it non-functioning before? There wasn't one. There's nothing on, oh, on really? our homepage. Oh, wow. On mine, when I browse it, if you scroll down, it shows a little Discord doing. But I don't know. Yeah, you figure all that out. Got Apparently, it. I thought I did it. And it uh, Got us a button going regardless. Right. I had to up, upload a little image to click on. and Things are coming up. To kill. Links to the, cool. to the uh, server invite thing. I looked, I looked for there to be one so I could just <laughs> tell them where to click. And then yeah, yeah. That's one. what I thought was going to happen, but okay. But now we know. Uh, then I found a image for the button, but it wasn't. Uh, right it didn't have the. Oh, I didn't have the alpha channel, so it wasn't. It was like a big white blob behind it. So oh. I didn't put the transparency on it. And Savages. Throw it into the graphic editor real quick. Fortunately, that's a pretty simple process that I've done <clears> multiple. <throat> I like simple. Remember back when we were kids and everything was hard? It's still kind of hard because you, like, if you don't know what tool to use or if you, like, it's like, use this tool, okay, but how? Well, all you got to do is right click on this thing in the layers and add a transparency layer and then select <laughs> yeah. the. Just like, oh, God. But, like, once you've done it a few times, it's not bad. What I hate the most is when it's like a tutorial for like two versions ago and it's not quite accurate. Uh, or. Or it's like you're you're wanting to know how to do one simple fucking thing, but you can't find a video. Like it, it's literally like I'm like, what button do I push to do this? But first I have to sit through fucking four minutes of hey guys, you know. Yeah. Recently we've all been a little bit down, and it's like oh Jesus Christ, just tell me what button to push. What's the joke about trying to get recipes? It's like, how long do I grill this shit for? <laughs> well, when I was backpacking through Tuscany, no. <laughs> how long do you cook macaroni for? Fuck me. Sweet. Cranking right along. So I'll just warn you now, I'm terrible at faces. I put skin on them. Sometimes I'll even put a five o'clock shadow. Those little up. faces on those guys are hard to get. Dude. And then uh, uh the couple the couple minis that I've painted, I try to get in there and like even give them a little bit of eye color and stuff. Mm -hmm. God, is that a fool's errand? I have yeah. you have to like use a pin. Basically. 
and you have to do it like as a oval with two flat sides. It's just does a trick to it. And it's I just wanted to get like a dot of paint that would yeah, didn't yeah. take up the whole face. I'm like, <laughs> God. like the, the famous Space Marine floating around. <laughs> I, did, I have a couple, though, that I've done that I'm pretty proud of. They took a long time, and I redid them many times, right? Everybody yeah. else busted out five or six of them, and I'm like, I got one guy who's getting respectable. I was going to say, if you're not happy with it, man, then keep on trucking. I've never stripped any down, but I've, there's some that have so many layers of paint, I had to actually scrape it off and start over because his face was just no longer resembled a face because there was no more texture because I had painted it too much. Uh, weirdly, both of my favorite ones had books as part of the model, and then I got it all close and like put writing into the books and shit. Oh, that see, I, I like that kind of detail. For some reason, I've always been fascinated by that. There's these girls in Russia. They call it uh, Tiny Furniture. I think it's just tinyfurniture.com. Go find them on a uh, Facebook. But they do resin like terrain and but like furniture and stuff and like details. But they'll also paint it. And they've done like uh, spell sheets and told books and bounty boards and they're they're crap. They've actually replicated uh, famous art like uh, Starry Night and Monet or um, Mona Lisa and shit. By like like itty bitty scale. Yeah, it's really phenomenal. And it's actually pretty competitively priced, and you can buy the unpainted shit for really cheap. They have stuff like an entire kitchen for a modern family house and stuff like that. So once I finish all the black site buildings I have in my shame pile, I'll get the furniture to, uh, I want to deck them out. So they'll be used as terrain pieces for uh, specter operations. <laughs> like I need a full uh, set of office chairs and a waterboarding station. What? Wait, what? And you can get that. <laughs> They're like, sure, that's the number four combo. They have one that's like a mechanic shop I want because I'm doing kind of a – I got those motorhead miniatures, so I have Lemmy and a, and a filthy animal, and I can't even remember the guy's name. But they're all dressed like bikers, so I'm doing like a chop shop kind of – they're the independent faction in my campaign. They're not the good guys or the bad guys, but they are guys, and your karma affects how they react to you, what they have available to you. But as I want to do, I overdo everything. <laughs> so not only did I buy the shop, I bought uh, actually the Modifius does the Fallout Wasteland Warfare. And I bought all the workbenches from Fallout, the, the latest games. Because they're perfect. Because it's a welder, uh, looks like a drill press, a lathe, and some other stuff. So they look perfect in some skeezy biker gangs chop shop hideout. I'm not joking. So I like a kitchen set. <laughs> but they did like a 1960s, 50s nuclear family. So it's all like future retro. It's pretty cool. It looks really good. And it's like everything from the tables and chairs to even the cabinet. I should have fucked that up. To the cabinetry. A little too much water on that one. Jeez, is way too much water. I mean, they're too thin or too thick, I rarely get it right on the first trip. I want to get through these guys so I can get to the fun stuff. Like these guys are cool, but I just did a whole 15 of them. But I want to get them done so I can go do something different. But as you'll soon see, I have about 15 projects all in the different <laughs> states of completion. But I can't say, though, they all do move forward eventually. 
feel like that's part of I, w- I would get nothing done if I had to just only focus on one thing. See, I tried that. I was like, let me finish this in its entirety, and then I'll move to the next thing. And like, you get burned out. Yeah, you get bored, and yeah, it's just not. You won't make any progress that way. You got to be able to switch out. Exactly. So I got World War II Belgians because I'm trying to do a good job. Because like, I mean, I get better every time I do a, an army. I get better. So I'm trying to make these guys look. I'm using different techniques I learned from uh, Marcus, the GW guy. So uh, trying to. I never really. I overused washes. I didn't use shading well. I'm trying to change that. And these guys look rough now, but by the time they're done, they'll actually look pretty good. Still don't do eyes, but. I got a bunch of Vietnam Marines, but again, those are just all a bunch of green guys. So I think I'm going to go, next is going to be Pirates. Once these Belgians are done in a couple of days. I backed a Kickstarter from the guys who did Blood and Valor. I can't remember their name. Well, they also did uh, Blood and Plunder. They did this huge pirate Kickstarter. And I got the biggest one they had because it was stupid cheap for like, like a hundred minis and two boats and the rules and the cards. And it was a whole box of shit for like 120 bucks. And it's been delayed for like a year, but it's mm. going to be here soon. So it's like, oh man. So on top of my other shit, my pile is about to get huge. So I need to get cracking. Uh, Zero said I should take a picture of it. I think I'll do that. Maybe people can vote on what I do next. <laughs> There's so much random shit, dude, in different states of completion. I want it to be like, I want a picture of like a literal pile, though. Like, that, no, you're, yeah. The thing is, uh, <laughs> I have that. Like, I don't have to yeah. exaggerate. <laughs> it's already kind of in a pile. It's just, actually, it is kind of in a pile. It's just kind of standing upright. I have weird shit like uh, a Ravel made. There's this prototype. Like, did, have you heard of the German flying saucer? Mm-hmm. Supposedly the Germans were trying to make a flying saucer. I don't know if they did. If they had a prototype or if they had a whole design. I don't know. But for whatever reason, this thing is uh, was in some stage of development. Maybe it never left the the papers. But uh. This Ravel, the big model company, they made one. And on the box art was like this German flying saucer flying through space, shooting machine guns, mind you, <laughs> machine guns out the side into space. But I guess people got really mad because they're like, oh, the Germans didn't get to space. They didn't have UFOs. So they got really butthurt because they thought people were going to take it literally. And they made them um, recall or not recall. I think they just stopped selling that model. I think they went back and just changed the box art and they're reselling it again now. But when that was fiasco was going down, I went and bought one. Because what, FOMO? I don't know. That's hilarious though. Like why wouldn't if you were already buying minis of that era, why wouldn't you get a cool flag sauce? Well, exactly. I, I found a really cool one. It's uh it's not the right scale. Technically it's too small. But it's like fifteen inches across, so it's huge. So who cares how small it is? Because it's giant to begin with. And it's going to be more of a table piece anyways. Like a terrain piece or like an objective or something. I don't know. I don't have a plan to have Germans space. Actually, so I go off on these tangents and I buy stuff for these. I got a bunch of astronauts. And then sure shit, Black Sight started doing their own minis. And guess what they are? Fucking astronauts. So now I got to go buy a bunch of astronauts fighting people in space. If you can find skeleton astronauts, like dead astronauts, oh man, take my money. Well, just do like get the regular astronaut with the full helmet, right? And then you gouge out the 
the mask yeah. part of the helmet and then put a, just a skeleton head in there. <laughs> or some art guy can just do that for me. Yeah. But no, yeah, Kit Bash, that is pretty cool. Because the ones I've seen of the skeletons, uh, astronauts, are um, they're very Flash Gordon-y. The, the art's very... Uh, they're carrying, like, ray guns and shit. I want something more like... Do you remember the movie Heavy Metal? Where the dude crashed and all the dead <laughs> yeah. Japanese bar? Yeah. I want, I want something like that. I've been using uh, Microsoft OneNote to write my campaign because I was doing it while I was at sea on the ship. So uh, OneNote just made it really easy to, uh, to combine everything. It's well, a good it, it's a good one of those things. Yeah. It's the one I, I used to use quite a bit too. So the cool thing is once I'm done with my campaign, writing it, or the pieces, I wrote like basically the end of the entire first act. I basically wrote myself into a corner because, like, I have a pretty compelling story. I got some hooks and some shit, but I don't know where to go next. But I can uh, send it to people so they can play their own Spectre scenarios. And vice versa, go download other people's. Because I'm assuming there has to be some kind of, like, homebrew D&D kind of hub where people trade that kind of stuff. It's the 21st century. There has to be something along those lines. There's probably a bunch of decentralized ones, yeah. Oh, yeah, decentralized for sure. It's probably like... I, um, Rando's doing Rando. You can... I know people release homebrew content packs like onto Roll20. Oh, that's interesting. Like, that could be fun. That's pretty neat. And it'd be... Um, I'll show you the way... If you want one day, I'll show you how... The, the one that I bought was laid out and it was actually made it super easy to play because it's got like uh, it's all organized by like acts kind of so it's like in this first act here's the map of the town here's the you know oh, all the, the characters all you might meet and here's the things that could happen and, and at the end of each little phase like here's what kind of <clears throat> treasures you might find or that's pretty neat and then it has all the maps and stuff already too, ready to go. Oh, so it has like um, the information for the dungeon master, and then it has like uh, yeah, yeah, his own private kind of. Yeah, really yeah, cool. and the and then the maps have multiple layers of stuff. So there's like the the background layer of the map, which is you know what the actual terrain and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they've got the token layer, which is where you could put. Um, enemies and things, and then it has a lighting layer, so you can put like, oh, that's um, cool, like torches, torches and thing, or yeah, and then or draw walls and shit, so that like as they're moving around through the, they really elaborated on that corridors that's and shit. Cool. Yeah, it's cool, sweet. And then and then so then you make the tokens for your players, and then they have like a radius of dark vision and shit that they can see for so many feet. And... Oh, and you can actually uh, illustrate that. Yeah. Cool. So as they're moving around, like bit by bit, <laughs> they yeah, yeah. literally like peeking around corners and shit. So that that's cool. There needs there. to be that element of, uh, of mm -hmm. some some danger. Otherwise, what's the point? You know. Mm -hmm. You know, you're gonna steamroll it. But hey, check it out. We finished uh, the boots and helmets this night. Wait. Took almost two hours for, to do... What is it? One, two, three, four, five. Sixteen guys. One guy didn't even have a hat. You can't say you were focused on speed, though, either. No, no. We were fucking around with technical stuff. And so we're right sure now, we shoot the shit anyways. Right. Uh, every once in a while, your camera's doing some kind of like digital flicker shit. I see that. Something. That's new. Yeah. Huh. I wonder if like the cord did the cord get kinked or something or is there I don't think so. It's on a it's on a boom. That's something we'll have to look into. I wonder if it's trying to do something else behind it. I I probably hit a button and screwed it up. But I say I this know. is a get a place as any call it a night. Okay. Yeah, it was. It didn't. It wasn't doing this the whole time. No, so I just was, noticed it. And I've been watching that 
slipstream for maybe I did something. Who knows? Oh, it could be my fan. I don't know. We'll uh, troubleshoot this another time. But uh, cool. That was a good second stream, I think. I got a lot of shit done, and that's what it's all about. <laughs> Hopefully, it'll save the VOD this time. Yeah, that'd be cool. All right. Do I need to hit a button or something that says <laughs> one of those fancy star wipes? <laughs> um, if you if you set star. something up like that, you got one. <laughs> Ending soon, which is now, because I gotta go to bed because it's past my bedtime. Because I'm there, you go. I gotta work. Yeah. But no, I'm happy. I'm actually, I haven't. With the corona, no one's getting together. No one's playing games. You know, they're starting mm-hmm. to, but um everyone's been playing at home you know a lot of guys use their trump bucks to build game rooms and tables and i know i did so uh you know that excitement of painting for next week's game you know what are you going to bring to the table what's different what's the surprise ending and then and, and no one plays so it's like why paint so i'm playing a lot of video games and i'm trying to get away from that so i'm glad to be uh be painting again so all right well uh Different bat time, uh, same bat channel. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Take it easy.